Farrings is about 80 hectares of, of nature reserve. Going back 150 years, all of this area was dug for clay. The most important parts of the reserve are the reed beds and the freshwater wetlands. Reed bed is a temporary habitat, it's always trying to dry itself out and become woodland. So the, the idea with the management that we carry out is to effectively arrest succession. So we allow it to go so far and then rewind the clock by, by managing the, the reed beds on a rotation. A lot of the, the common species that occur within reed beds, things like reed warblers and sedge warblers, they need reed bed as their primary habitat. On top of that, there are some extremely rare species associated with reed bed and bittern and bearded tit and marsh harrier, uh, uh, three of those. Uh, we have all of those breeding here, you know, the, the big three. We manage the reed beds in two quite different ways. One is, is just the, the annual sort of rotational management by cutting the reeds and, and, and or burning them. And that's A, to slow succession down and B, to sort of reinvigorate them. But secondly, we do a lot of work with water around or within the reed bed. The, the areas of, of deep open water around the reserve are not good for bitterns, but the edges of the reed beds, we've created a series of, of ditches. In the last two winters, we've re-dug 4.85 kilometres, but that's in a straight line. If you actually measure all the wiggles, it's probably about eight kilometres of, of edge that we've created. And bitterns prefer to be stood within the reed, hidden, but fishing into a, a channel and uh, you know, if a predator or a you know, disturbance comes along they can just take one step back and they're gone. It also means that we, we can better manage the water levels within the reed beds so we can keep the reed beds wet which again slows succession down but also allows fish and amphibians and aquatic invertebrates to get into the reed bed and, and makes it a much more vibrant living habitat rather than just wall-to-wall -wall sort of dead reed. The Humber's massively important. It's, uh, it's the biggest estuary in the UK. Despite the vast amount of industry on the Humber, there are still hundreds of thousands of, of wading birds that use it. Some just on migration and, and others that will spend the whole winter there. People are an important part of, of nature conservation. Without people on board, it's almost a pointless exercise. You know, we need their support, we need people to appreciate what we're doing. And we do an awful lot to attract visitors, but it is a nature reserve and the nature comes first and I think that primarily people need to bear that in mind you know, that their behaviour can have a, a negative impact whilst we want them to come and enjoy the reserve you know, they have to do so with a certain amount of responsibility. Volunteers are integral to everything we do here. The vast majority of the day-to-day -day work is done by volunteers. I've got a team of about 25 and today we've got five volunteers in and they're working on the turn rafts, getting them ready for the breeding season. I've always been into wildlife. Before I came back as a volunteer, I used to spend many a weekend here walking around. Summer here is, I think, as good as anywhere in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm biased. But on a nice summer's day, looking over the lakes, with the swan slowly moving over the water, you, I wouldn't change it for the world, really. Everybody here today, you know, we. We work together, everything, the talk is all about the preserving wildlife, preserving the environment. But there's things that's not immediately obvious to the average person. We are spending a lot of time redoing fencing to stop people getting into areas where they shouldn't be. They should stick to the pathways. There's so much to learn. It's a fantastic experience. I'd recommend it to anybody who's got some spare time. If they're into wildlife, there's no better place.